Yo, what's going on? Uh, Navi Halo, welcome back to another video. I have uh, myself and Two Foxy here kind of showing off some tips and tricks of the new map Catalyst. Uh, as you just seen, I kind of learned into it there. Um, yeah, well, this is uh, kind of like a, 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 a lot of tips and tricks that we've seen from playing and also seen from other people picking up as well. And uh, what we think is best for this map is going in more of a competitive mindset. You know, we've seen a lot of videos where people do basic tips and tricks and basic jumps but we wanted to kind of go into a bit more depth of how to play this map in a competitive environment so let's get into the first uh, tip and trick right now first kind of tip that we can go over right now is kind of flag routes uh i currently have uh two foxy or perry on the other side of the map i'm on his flag right now and i'm gonna do a uh, kind of fast flag route as well as at the same time he's gonna kind of just walk it so you can kind of see the difference in timing of like uh different things so if you want to start running it now <clears throat> so you can see here, I'm kind of sprinting around doing this part of the slides and I can hit slide jumps and stuff like this. And the reason why I run this side is so I can land on this ramp here and do a little slide boost. Now you can't actually hit that so much further, but that's like a, a very, very fast route. And as you can see, he's currently still walking it. He's currently still walking it and I'm near enough on my own flag right now. I've only just got there now. So like a, tra a traditional route of like a lot of the slides. So like if you can see from my point of view right now, you can get these flags moving really fast, which is one of the best parts about this map. This map's got a lot of ramps, uh, stairways and stuff that you can like, basically abuse to uh, move the map to the other, uh, move the flag to the other side of the map quicker. People, you'll slowly begin to notice as well on this map that a lot of this gameplay on this map tends to be a lot of OEs and or overextends if you're not sure about that term where you end up in basically in each other's bases. So a good tip to get these flags moving a lot faster is getting a lot quicker on these slides. Yeah, this whole map, this year, as you can probably see but looking around, we're just doing them naturally. It's like there's so many different slides that you can just do of every single tiny object. Like this slide boost is definitely something that is just maximized so much on this map. And not even just for like general flag running, but it, it just uh, in general, you can see so many different, like if you even see my screen here, you can. Slide boost even better over to that. A lot of the top players, they'll. Some people would just see this as a normal route. So if you can see here, a lot of players would just sprint. Whereas the top players, the fast players, will be hitting one slide there, sliding, sliding, sliding. And then if you can uh, get the flag in with your movement, you can basically traverse the map really fast, which is probably the. For me, my favorite part about this map is the fact that you can actually get across the map so, so much faster than other maps. I think because obviously like the fastest flag route you can do is running it through mid uh which obviously is like you have it's kind of like a high risk high reward one uh because obviously this cross of mid is quite hard especially if you fall dead them they're going to spawn this either left side and shoot you from here or they spawn the right side and shoot you from here so it's kind of risky going across but if you throw it out and do it all in one sweep you kind of get down and then you can even slide across even more <clears throat> and obviously you can use equipment and stuff like that even involved with it uh and then the grapples are, are a big one to use which i'm Two Fox is going to show it probably a bit later on with the using the grapple, but that's the probably the fastest route. But the, it's like a high risk, high reward one, right? Obviously, this cross from top mid is scary, and if the flag is uh, if you get killed when you're on the flag here, you you know that flag is pretty dead. Um, it being such a open, vulnerable place, but you, you know it's like a it's your, it's your traditional fast route, just as long as your teammates are covering the spawns, because the two major spawn points on this when you're running the flag um, <clears throat> is you're down here in the corner. Uh, and then it's the same on the kind of on the opposite side in the corner that way. So obviously people come up spawn, they're going to shoot like this cross or, or try and get to you as soon as possible. Um, yeah. So to basically to put it in short, our first real tip for this map is to start to abuse a lot of these ramps because especially in flag, you can be. In, it's basically a race. Okay. So the next uh, kind of thing we're going to show is how a grapple flag um, of two folks. He's currently got a grapple. And I'm just going to kind of run the flag, similar to what I just did uh, previously, but he's going to do it with a grapple, and you can see the distance that can be covered with a grapple. So I'll start running the flag now, just kind of a normal way. And I'll let Two Foxy kind of explain what he's doing there. Yeah, so it takes a bit more concentration than a normal flag, but if you... You can kind of see the how quick he gets across that, that cross right there from me watching him. Um, I just seen him cross that far and like how much damage am I really going to put down to him when he's done the whole cross right? If I sat here and tried to stop him, I've just spawned, say for example, when he's running the flag like that, I can't really kill him within that time frame, right? So him crossing that area is so quick. 
Yeah, the whole reason for the grapple play here is sometimes it feels like it's the same sort of speed. It's the fact that the speed that you actually hit this cross, as this map, as you can kind of tell, as you tend to be on the opposite side of the other team, it's about hitting these crosses as fast as you can. So if you see Jimbo, obviously he's going to hit the midpoint of the map. Even like top mid, if the flag was here, I could throw the flag forward, hit the grapple, grab it and it's all about just hitting these crosses as fast as possible uh, that's one of the big things about this map is I'm pretty sure this is other other than bizarre this is one of the few maps where the grapple is such a big influence on the map in terms of timings and stuff yeah uh, so as you can tell another flag run is pretty fast with the grapple um, so there's some more tips that we're actually going to mention with the grapple um, a lot of people are starting to cotton on to the fact that it's not just a mobility item, it's actually a bit of like a grabber tool. As you can see, overshield is up. Uh, you can imagine a scenario with eight players on the map with the indicator, everyone's going to be looking. Um, as you can see, I've got the grapple on the bottom right of my screen. Uh, when you can see this yellow indicator on my screen, it basically means that you can... Uh, it's, it's touching what you're aiming at. So can you imagine the other team that they're this side, I've got the grapple. Instead of hitting this cross where plenty of uh, lines of sight can see me, I can actually grapple the overshield to myself. Whole time, I'm out of sight, free overshield. Yeah, and you're not down here in the middle of the brawl where you can get shot from every single like position, you know? It yeah, cuts so off so I, I could and... grapple the overshield, I pick up the overshield, I pick up my grapple, and then it's so fast, I'm straight into their base. Overshield. Pull in the flag. I don't know, I, for me, the grapple is probably the biggest... I don't know, what would you call it? Uh, biggest utility power weapon. Uh, in the right hands, it's a power weapon on this map. Mm -hmm. so yeah, if you can get the grapple in the hands, you can get a lot of flag pulls. And it's even used... Uh, I can even go into it. It's even used as like a, a way, sneaky way to get into the base. Right? I'm sure a lot of people have seen the, the grapple used where, say, for example, you spawn here, they're running your flag. You can go here grab the new grapple and you can actually go out of the map which is kind of funny to do you can go out of the map and make it all the way around to the base it's kind of like there's a way of obviously perfecting it and, and you can hit it and actually two grapples if you hit it perfectly but as you can see here i'm going to use it just for the sake of it i can go here grab the flag and i'm off and just like that i've just like got I've, i bypassed this whole section here of potentially getting shot while trying to make a desperate touch and even then in flag standoffs right you can literally come around and it's very hard to hear someone lands so if you can match to perfect that it, i think it's going to get quite predictable at points but it also looks i mean it looks pretty cool if you can hit it perfectly uh, and obviously that can be done on both sides uh from the spawn if you spawn this grapple side it's a pretty nice thing that i think is uh using this map very unique to this map because i think like maps like bizarre you can't go outside of it um uh, i think recharge you also can't really go outside of it uh, so it's the only one you can like kind of maneuver the outer part of the maps not just the inside of the map Cool, so uh, another big tool, like I mentioned for the grapple, is not only is it to use to fly around the map, you can actually use it to grab weapons that you probably wouldn't usually go for. You can see I've grabbed the sword, uh, so I've beaten the timing to grab the weapon. Not only have I grabbed the sword, I can grab the flag. And it allows players, like say, say Jimbo is the player in their base, he could pull the flag out for me from the spot so if you don't know the the grapple cannot actually pull the flag unless it's off, off the, the spot oh, yeah so, so i'd have to run it so imagine jimbo gets to the base before me but f say he's got power weapons over shield i'm turning up late he would pull the flag obviously he needs to be involved and then i could just grapple the flag to myself allowing him to basically continue playing so yeah not only is the grapple used to move around the map, it's actually a great weapon or tool to make things a lot faster. <clears throat> so to summarize for the grapple, uh, you know, there's three main things that we can use it for. Like I say, it's a grabber tool for grabbing the overshield or grabbing weapons. Um, it can be used very well to maneuver around the map, uh, which again, I can show you again here. Uh, just, you know, this main example is maneuvering around the map and kind of swinging around to the back of the enemy's flag. As you can see that he's currently sat here and I can bleh, nearly miss it, but I can grab the flag and go straight away. Uh, obviously, like we said before, you can use it to 
grapple the flag away if I had one right now. Uh, you, go. you see it for example there. So that's a, that's kind of more of a, a grapple um, use, but it's also obviously mainly around this map. Like you say, this the grapple and the flag and uh, this map in general is, is so key. Um, the only downside I think is, is the fact that, in my opinion, you prefer to be this side run the flag comp wise. So the repulsor side, so it's the grapples kind of used more in like a, you know, you spawn there, you get in, get out of there kind of thing, and then you can move around the rest of the map. But that's a, that can be a quick summary for the grapple on Catalyst. I say here's another grapple tip. There's there's plenty of them now where you can actually go underneath the map. A lot of these players are pretty flashy and you never know, situational. Say you're getting pushed on the front, get the overshield out of them. But yeah, for, for us, grapple is really important on this map just because it allows you to do so much. It lets you to grab weapons. Basically stops you from going to places that you don't want to go to safely. There is another flag run you can uh, you can do with the grapple as well, and this is super risky as well. But you can do this one and go across if you really like be quick about it. I think it's very, very unorthodox. You haven't seen many people do it because it's, it's rough when you actually have the, uh, the grapple and the flag at the same time. But that is just so clean. Looks good though. It's just really fast. Yeah, it's how quick I cross this. This obviously crossing this middle right on all all of the sides is so risky, right? And you want to basically get across this open space as quick as possible. So that's just another way to do it. It's such a obviously clean route, and you can even do it obviously on the other side, right? You don't even need to have the flag if they're if they're running the flag. You can get across quickly. I mean, obviously, I know you got you got grapple and you can fly, but it's just another 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 use for the grapple. This map is just, you know, grapple upon grapple upon grapple. Like, that thing is so huge on this map. So, the problem, you know, we covered that a lot, but that is a lot of catalyst is grappling. Now, we're basically going to talk about the bases, uh, how we think of the bases. Uh, the way we see the bases is a lot like Bazaar, a lot like a bit of a fortress where if you can beat them to these meeting points, it's really hard for teams to come in. It's all about beating them to the meets, beating them to the areas where, as you know, Halo is a, a lot of nade. Uh, like blocks almost. So first thing with these bases, uh, you don't want to be caught being stuck at the back of the bases because if they get through the doors for free, you're at the disadvantage. But if you can make it so they're the ones coming through the door, you're the ones at the advantage. It's just something to think about. It's small, but a lot of players will like linger around like this midpoint when you almost want to be all the way up or all the way back. Uh, there's another thing with the back of the base, which Jimbo will talk about, that a lot of players don't actually use these back spots. So you can imagine I come into the base, I expect some players to be close, I see nothing, I see nothing, I look across, I'm like, oh, there's no one here, I'm cool, they're all leaving. I touch the flag, straight away. It's just small things that players have started to do. Um, another thing with the base is the fact that a lot of the players actually dislike this, but there's these top doors and if you can imagine I don't know if you can hear through Jimbo's audio they're actually really loud as you come to the base so you can imagine it's an audio cue that so you can imagine Jimbo's in the base he's not looking he hears this straight away he knows he's at the advantage because he has the audio cue on me uh, so there, that's for there there's three big things with this, these bases on this game, is on this map, sorry. Catalyst, there's these really deep corners at the back, which 99% of players don't check. There's the, the top door with really loud audio cues. So if you ever hear that door, your team should be looking at it because it's basically telling you it's free info. And also it's these meeting points on these two doors. As you can see on this side, if you beat them to the door, they have to clamber up. They've got to clamber into you. You can imagine Jimbo's at an advantage if I climb into him. Or if they get knocked down, they then have to come underneath and they flank you. But you're just always at an advantage if you are in control of the door. Or if you know there's a lot of numbers. Just just live in. Just another, uh, this is a very, very small quick, trip, uh, quick uh, tip on this map. As you can see, quite often, a lot of people are obviously crouching the corner of swords, right? You can actually see the blue light on the wall there. Obviously, we can see his outline there. But you can actually see the blue light. And it's something I've actually noticed quite a lot on this map is you can see if someone's crouching around the corner with the sword. So you kind of know not to peek that corner, right? And if, if uh, Two Foxy walks around the corner a bit more, you can kind of see the sword come around. 
So it's in, in your... And just something to look out for, right? Something small. All these walls, the sword reflects off it. It's like you can see from my perspective here. So if you, if you really have a keen eye, you can see where the sword player is actually crouching. The amount of times I've come around this corner and I've seen someone just crouched here and I see the sword on the wall and it's just like, all right, well, I'm not going to peek that corner. Obviously, two nades, that's going to make the guy back off. But that's a, that's a small... That's actually like a, a small little tip that I've noticed on this map. It's the same on both sides as well. I think it's very clear on this side. I think it's side. even clearer on the other side, like yeah, blue on blue. I'm trying to think. But it's definitely something to look out for. I've noticed so many players obviously crouch around corners using the sword the way it's supposed to be used, right? Obviously close quarters. But yeah, even, even on this, this blue side, you can kind of see it a lot more. Uh, just crouching on the corners and stuff. It's just something to look out for when you're checking these corners because, yeah, there's a lot of corners in the map and obviously the sword being up on well, every two, three minutes is kind of powerful. <laughs> You say, like, like I said, with these meeting points, uh, obviously, if you're in the base, you, you, you're you fighting over these two meeting points, the, the top side and this side. Um, but also, you got to think of it from the other's perspective. So say we've got kills and we've got out of our base. We're the team that have to break into their base. So you can imagine Jimbo's here, he's trying to hold me. It's all about just living, buying time and suckering them into coming out of the doors. Just the whole time they're in there, like, they're at the advantage. But if you can pull them out, you can get in the base. Because obviously, the, as you can imagine, the, these bases are really hard to get into. And especially in flags, like, you have to, as, as mad as it sounds, you have to take the risk. You have to get into the base. You have to make those kills. So there's also these windows. Just another quick tip. And you can kind of see, like, uh, you can see another player coming out. And obviously, if he's not looking, then I have the upper hand on him. Um, just a, a very quick one. I believe it's on both sides as well. You can see obviously this side's got the, the pulse rifle, pulse carbine. But good uh, little trick you can do. Just look through that window before you peek because obviously this area is quite uh, quite open. So another uh, um, tip and trick kind of thing that we've noticed personally from playing matching so much is people always clambering jumps when you don't need to. So a simple jump like this here, you don't need to clamber it both times. And how, mu like, how much of a, a disrupt, like what's the word, like a disruption it would be no you put yourself in such a disadvantage because you're always a shot behind because you clambered because you think how slow this is if i clamber right now and i clamber this again and he would put too many shots i mean i'm already down on shots whereas if i push up this side jump crouch jump crouch i can straight away shoot the second he's up there right so there's there's no like um dead time from me doing yeah and doing an animation now that this one's big so if you show the difference between you clambering and then you and do it again you can see how fast you are on my screen like you're you're it's instantaneous like we're, we're shooting at the same time so that, that is that's one of the main ones into the base is you've made you've done so good you've done all the hard work to get to their base a lot of players will do maybe get two kills on the way get to their base clamber and the and then they've done all the hard work but purely because they didn't do a small tip of not clambering uh, all the hard work's gone and they spawn at the back and they do it again. Uh, so obviously that's one of the furthest ones up the map. So you can imagine you've come from the other side, you've come all the way. And then this one's really big to the base, you don't want to be clambering. There's also one on these big meeting points. Uh, that I'll show you. So if you can imagine Jimbo's in this base. He's kind of meeting me at the same sort of time. If I clambered forward, you'd, you can shoot me as I land. <laughs> if you can imagine I clamber forward. I've already got. I'm already two shots down, maybe. So, but if you can picture the same sort of scenario as we mentioned before, I come, I jump, we're shooting at the same sort of time. It's just small things that are putting players at disadvantages, which you don't really need to be in. So that one there is a big one. I see a lot of players clamber this. They're always at a disadvantage. The one second of you climbing is the one second advantage that they have so and even then if someone's sat in this corner right here and you clamber on that ledge you can just shoot that nade in there instead you know if they're sat there doing this clamber up here and they land on his nade you just shoot it in the end of the day right whereas if you clamber for or jump forward and jump forward you even eliminate that kind of like we don't completely eliminate it but you nullify the damage that you would take from shooting the grenade as well as you're in their face straight away so there's also that to bear in mind as well so this side's quite simple the clamber uh and the last clamber that we will mention is on the actually on the other side uh, if we can go over to the other side. It's the same sort of thing, it's a doorway. But what a lot of players have started doing is they actually climb. You don't really want to be climb into the first guy. 
Okay, you can picture I'm coming from this base, Jimbo's in that base. The meeting point will kind of be the door again. If you want to go inside. Say I get knocked down. I shouldn't really be clambering into this player. He's always at an advantage and now he's the one who dictates how this fight goes. So yeah, for, for me, this jump here is really coin flippy. Because you've also got a climb. Look left. Yeah, it's just small things. For me, I feel like the first player should maybe even take the extra second or so. Try and pull the guy out of the doorway. Say I get damage on him. Back down and then other players can clamber in because you know, you know what you're going into. Yeah, it's just a small thing. A lot of players do it. A lot of players clamber like this. Some people even clamber twice. Like, it's so clunky. You need to be smooth with it. You need to jump twice. I think even one clamber sometimes is too much. When it should be zero almost. But if you're doing two, then you're stiff. <laughs> yeah, effectively, yeah. Like, you're, you're really... I mean, and then again, on the flip side, you can do it the other way. Right, you just spawn your own flag. Or you're down here in the courtyard, you can do the jump. Jump again. No clamber involved. Slide round. You know what I mean? Like, you have so much time that you can... It's all about keeping your gun up. No dead time. Yeah, exactly. Okay, guys. Thank you all for watching this uh, video. Hope you guys did, uh, you know, learn some new tricks. Find out some new tricks. And obviously, if you've got other things that you also know, obviously, drop them uh, down in the comments below. And obviously, give a like if you did enjoy our a bit more of an in-depth... Uh, look into the new map catalyst we have here and obviously look at these brand new look at these lovely new skins you know make sure you check out these new skins nice and yellow with the spawn helmet but yeah uh, jokes aside i hope you guys did uh, learn some new things and uh, did enjoy the video and like i said if you do want to see more content like this from us and uh, obviously put the put a comment uh, down below and uh, yeah thank you all for watching and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one whenever that does happen